Bam, we ain't got to clap no more. Nah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chingo Chats. Leave your politics at the door. We got some ginger lemon tea on deck. Some of that Texas honey. It smells so relaxing. It's fragrant. Kind of like when I walked in here the other day and it smelled like somebody had just gotten a massage and I had no idea that massages had gone down inside the studio. Rob didn't know what happened. He said either somebody came back here and did something they weren't supposed to do, had them a little quickie. I don't know what these... That was uh, my first thought. These busy couples, I don't know why it smelled like oils and candles. That was my first thought. When I realized that that probably didn't happen, second <laughs> thought was, where was my invite for these massages? Because hey. I could really use one. Yo, sh- man, I think I, I think her name was Tanisha. Man, I don't want to say... I, I think don't it was wanna... Natasha. Natasha. Okay, well, I'm bad at names. But, uh, bro, we're looking forward to the next time because... Whew. That's what I heard your reaction was that like after you got it was just oof. I mean she's hitting all kind of <sighs> like Mighty Soul, bro. Did she tell you? She talked about her podcast. Little, her little, she found a little bit of trauma that was in there. The name of her uh, episode for yesterday was uh, "Massaging the Soul" because the way she described it, she she was like, "Yeah, she basically massaged my soul. Like we had a session. We basically had a whole session on the couch, you know, like therapy yeah. style." Let out some of them uh, inner demons that are locked up in a lot of us. Well, she, yeah, she had real good energy. And um, yeah, dog, it's, she was like MMA and massage. Like she hit you with some, like some Thailand shit. She was going to Muay Thai with you. And she hit it to the Swedish. And she might hit you with the, um, what is that shit they call it? Like sports, uh, where they like, sh- they get in there with the tools on the fascia. Oh yeah, like the Graston fascia release type that stuff. That type, man, she's just hitting all kinds of shit. Uh, when's the last time you had a massage before that? It had been a <clears> while, dog. So you definitely needed it. People that have never had it or haven't like been fortunate enough to have it on a semi-regular basis don't really know what they're missing out on, man. Like the body tenses up so often, you know, when you're under a lot of stress in this last two years. I think we've all been under way too much stress. Um, that when you get a massage, it's almost like an out-of-body experience in a, in a sense. Do you agree? You think was it that um, good, that intense? I don't know about out of out of body. We were like having a whole conversation, mm-hmm. but um, you know, I, I I let her in on the inside joke of the podcast. I was like, man, it's a running joke where I'll be telling the listeners like, yo, y'all see the y'all see the level I have to operate at. I gotta stay ready in case HBO calls. You know, you gotta do traveling. You it's all about optimization, dog. So on it, if you want to be a sponsor, I'll let your boy. Um, but like self care and having your team, having your trainer, if, you know, again, not everybody's going to have, have, want to have that in their budget or some people, you know, they're like, man, I'd rather just get a Peloton or whatever, or I'll just look on YouTube and go to the gym and, and follow along with some stuff. But, um, but when you do have that team, you know, I, I'm just grateful that I'm, I guess, wise enough now to understand, you know, like the importance of, um, you know, you. Obviously, you got to put in the work to deserve the rest. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> that, that kind of goes into what one of the things I wanted to talk about today was we tried before we had the discord, before we had uh, before the Patreon was as popping as it is now with the number of people and the interactions. OK, and, Rob, talk your shit, Pippin. And all that. I'm just saying, you know, it's really it's, it's escalating. It's reaching that kind of like the, the roller coaster is going it, up. Man, it's looking like the singularity, homie. You got damn right. Big so Don. So we tried to do something back in October for like sober Octoberish time when Rogan always does that. Uh, didn't cry really. It didn't really go anywhere. Let's just be honest. Didn't go anywhere after the first like week maybe. Yeah. But now with the discord and the ability for everybody to, to stay connected whenever they want, I wanted to do some kind of challenge. Uh huh. Go ahead. Um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna let you finish, but uh, Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, George Bush don't like black people. No. Um, (laughs) Man, my bad, dog. I don't want to cut you off. But no, ba- basically, is, is what I wanted to say is this. Last time, it fell off because it, the metric was steps. Yeah. And for me, yeah. I was like, man, my watch been tripping. I ain't, I've been doing other shit. I ain't really been like walking, per se. Like, that wasn't a system that was built in. It's like, hey, we're going on a morning walk, night walk, whatever. But what if this year, I want to see what you have in mind. But this year, it's like the way Rogan and them did it one time, which is like, you got to get in three workouts, whether it's, whether it's, I carried groceries up and down, you know, I helped my friend move. Like I went for a walk. Uh, like depends on how lax we want to be with the definition. Like, is it a CrossFit class? Is it yoga? You know, I say both should count. 
Okay. I was going to, I like that. It, it could actually be a part of the challenge. I was thinking of, because everybody, you know, goes into the new year, not everybody, a lot of people with the, the new year, new me kind of thing. Gyms boom with memberships, uh, trainers boom with clients. And then after about mid-February, early March, when spring's barely about to kind of kick off, people start to fall off, right? Which if that happens, that's fine. But if, we're, if we could just take that first quarter to really tackle some of these things, my idea is doing a, uh, not just weight, not just like straight weight loss challenge, like a biggest loser kind of thing, but a percentage of body weight. So for instance, some of the listeners, let's just say that we have a listener that's on, on the uh, two, high 200s, maybe breaking that 300 pound you know, uh, number. And then we have you, you know, and then we have somebody that's like in the high one nineties or whatever. If he loses, if, if somebody that's 300 pounds loses 20 pounds, it's a, it's great. But if somebody loses, it's one ninety loses 20 pounds. That's a huge percentage of their body. Right. Mm. So there's a formulation that you can use for this kind of biggest loser type shit. That's not just straight pounds where it would be percentage of body, uh, weight to depending on your height and weight and all that. So I'll, I'll figure that formula out. And then we figure we have to figure out a way how to let people in on this and how we're gonna organize it and whatever structure it. But that's kind of my, my idea. I would say join the newsletter uh -huh. if you want to participate. Join the newsletter. Join the newsletter because the next however many emails or weeks, right, are gonna be based around updates. Yeah, pertaining to this. So I would suggest, like you know, the shit you just mentioned. That's a whole lot of math, bro. It's not. Uh, you know, I did. You know what I'm talking about? Like, hey, man, you're the you're the educated one here. I was more into the arts. No, 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 no. On paper here, you're clearly one of the most educated people that's ever been on one of these mics. But in other words, OK, so then let me take some credit. Then I'm educated enough to know that you got to keep it simple. OK, so I know you're great with numbers and shit, and I just don't want to discourage people. So what if we did this? Let's say hypothetically on the low end. Plan A, like the basic shit, the basic. Your shit's like the premium. That's like, and if you're really a go-getter, <laughs> like if you want to win in two categories type of thing, but it's almost like the basic one could be like just three work, like set the bar semi-low. I mean, three, three workouts a week is a lot for some people. Like, dude, Absolutely. I, it might be like, man, I'm so busy. I'm lucky if I can squeeze in one. But um, what I would like to get across to people is how like your morning routine, your night routine, your systems, like for example, Wow, Chingo, how do you get the motivation to work out all the damn time with a, with a trainer? Well, I don't really have the motivation, and it's probably not even a habit. It's my wife said, hey, you want to do two times a week with Sean? You want to do three times a week with Sean? You know what I'm saying? Like, do we yeah. crank up the heat this month or whatever? And then it's locked in. Then it's like, I have an obligation. I paid for it. You know, it's my friend. I respect his time. I'm not going to be flaky. Like, the only times we have to cancel, if it's legit. Like, yo, I'm going to the doctor right now, bro. Baby like, sick, that kind of thing. Yeah, like it's got to be, it's got to be something major. So anyway, I would like for people to be like, yo, I learned about the systems versus goals. Okay. I learned you got to keep it simple. You got to show up. You got to like put it in your calendar type of thing versus like, I'm so busy. I'm lucky if I could get one workout a week. Instead, it's like, no, we play, what's that shit called? Y'all play bad badminton. We play badminton before dinner or whatever. We do do that. We do play after dinner sometimes. Here, I'm gonna, it's really simple, okay? It's a, it's a weight loss percentage calculator. It will give you the metric. And the reason I say that is because most people have this figure in their mind that they want to try to accomplish. Man, I got this last 10 I can't get rid of. I want to drop 20, or I'm really out of shape, and because of COVID and this whole lockdown, I want to drop 70 pounds, right? There's, you got to really be accountable. We got to figure out a way to have, how people will stick to this, really do it. Maybe there's an incentive for the listeners somehow. We you know, figure out some kind of structure for who can achieve this goal. But let's just play this uh, scenario out real quick. What is your current weight right now? Well, you know what they should win? What? Like a dope-ass prize box with some, um, like some sponsors. Like say if my you know, um, brother Earl want to throw in some jerky or Shell Shock CBD throw in some, some gummies. I like it. Or like n the nutrition people or something they might be like hey we got some samples and shit some yeah pre-workouts pre and stuff and for you know you got a sweatshirt you know what i mean some stickers a, a shaker bottle got like just unreleased merch yeah a whole bunch of cool little knickknacks but um so go on what's your current weight i believe last time i checked man i was like 170 
74. 174. And Something like w- that. do you have an ideal, like, if we're just talking straight weight? In other words, what weight class would I fight? Yes. Yes. What weight class do you want to fight at? Do you want to be in the Thug Nasty? Do you want to be in the uh, George St. Pierre weight class? Like, where do you want to be? I'm little. You want to be in the Cody, I'm little. Cody Garbrandt? I'm little and I'm out of shape. So it's kind of like, yeah, dude, hey, Chingo, at your weight, you're fighting these big ass lean motherfuckers. At your like, weight right now, you'd be welterweight. You would be like up there with the Kamar Usman. Except my shit is fat. Kobe Covington. Yeah, get my ass whooped. Get straight killed. <laughs> um, nah, Masvidal. Oh, hell no. I'm a dead man if I do that. Um, basically, brother, if I had to just throw out... Um, be honest. Be, even if you want to be super shredded, let's say you want to go into 2022. I, I don't want to be tiny little dude. I, I want to be like, oh, this motherfucker fight, bro. You just wear smaller shirts. Like you know, he got no, 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 no. You gonna see? You gonna see love handles? Then. <laughs> no, not if you're shredded though. Correct. Uh, but that's what I mean. You gonna have to see me in a rashy all the time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying ain't ain't nothing concealed. You know what I'm saying Second Amendment all up in your face. Only gun is concealed is the main missile. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about. Um, I don't know. Give me a I number. Think ten pounds. Ten pounds. Okay. Uh, ten pounds. It's because I was tempted to be like, well, so who, who fight at one fifty five? Ain't that like a weight class? Yeah, yeah. One fifty five is middleweight, which is like but Conor he, McGregor's. Well, how about this though? This is where, fuck this. You're not supposed to compare yourself to people's fight weight because they're super dehydrated. Oh like, yeah. They're like collapsing. They they've been in the sauna all night. Yeah. It being, you know, whatever. So don't compare yourself to like, oh, Conor McGregor fight day. It have to be like, for example, what's what does um, you know, TJ Dillashaw, one of these people, I think that he was on steroids or something, but like <laughs> Yeah, true. But basically pick a fighter like Cody Cody Garbrandt, whatever his name is. And, Cody Garbrandt, and yeah. Garbrandt, whatever, Garbrandt. <laughs> and say, all right, what what's your walk around weight? Meaning when you don't have a fight that day, when yeah. it's like, man, I, you know, I train, but I'm not cutting liquids. Well, for this recent fight, he weighed in at uh, 125, bantamweight. Oh, oh, my God. And he walks around probably at like 140. That's 20 pounds. I know, but think about 125. Yeah. Listen to that number, bro. It's like, who, who my daughter, who weighs that? Yeah, I'm not saying it's going to be It's like you. a tiny little girl. Like, no, I'm thinking about him. Like, bro. He ain't got no business trying to get down to 125. I mean, I know he did it. He's also, I mean, that's his original weight class. He went up from 125 over the years and just went back down for the first time in a few years. Mm. He's a little guy. He's probably like 5'5", five, five, maybe-ish. But maybe 5'4". Five, five. He might be 5'6", which is pretty tall for a phantom <sighs> weight. But anyway, we sticking with 10 pounds here? Just to do sure. this example? Yeah, that way I don't go overboard and be like 15. All right, so starting weight would be 174. And listeners, play along with this. Uh, current weight, let's just say today... We did this for six weeks, and now you're 164. Your weight variation by percentage would be 5.75. So you will have lost almost 6% of your body weight from the starting point, right? So let's say it's 6%. That was 10 pounds. If I do, right now I'm 228, and I say I lose 10 pounds, and I go to uh, 218, my variation is 4.3. So my 10 pounds was only a 4 percent difference oh. that's why it's 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 more fair this way than straight mm. pounds pound for pound because i'm taller i'm i'm already just bigger than you it's, i'd have to lose like 15 to 20 to match that same five percent so everybody now listening like is there a goal you want to hit doesn't matter if it's five 10 15 whatever to 70 who can make the biggest gap between their original weight and their after the let's just say you know four six eight weeks or whatever challenge mm-hmm it's really, it's really a simple way to do it because you're not just going like every Friday, let's say we waited in, on the Discord and everybody sent a picture of their weigh-in mornings. You don't need to be showing yourself in, in your fucking bikinis or in your uh, or sh- uh, uh, tank top or shirtless or whatever. Just what's your weight and then we'll do the percentage and then that's it. Um, I can't wait to hear how people implement systems into their routine like in other words if they're like i started taking sleep supplements exactly i started having to drink more water that'll be the interesting part how do they do it right yeah like um like the book don gave marisol it had um the little checkbox i want to photocopy that shit like or get my own what shut up bro merry christmas oh this for me brother yeah oh man see now i feel bad i ain't got you shit (laughs) i ain't got you shit (laughs) no i I'll be like, man, I, I think it's something. I, I know I got <laughs> something around here that, that I've been wanting to give you. I got these new shirts that oh, came in. I do got you on that other book. You did yeah, get I already got your book, see? But there's another one. 
Yeah, you I said gave you, you said the cat goes to movies. I didn't get you the other Do one. Do you have to read it in order? Nah. The concepts are real simple. Okay. It's, it's, it actually works out. I got it. It's a book for book. Yeah. yeah. Dude, okay. This is great because you got to put your water intake. It, it, it has a wellness check, like a checkbox where you're like, did you work out? Click. Yeah. Nature. Like, were you out in nature? Did Shit. You take a walk like better, this morning. Yeah, that was great. You better get your sunlight. I really want to try to implement um, the walks with the wife in the, in the morning. So Rob's like, man, are you going to shift me back 30 minutes? Uh, I don't want to throw off your, your No, routine. no, I love but, it. Or, we, or she and I, hopefully as the baby gets older, as she hits six months and stuff like that, she'll sleep better. And hopefully their allergies, we got to go get Penny allergy tested because I wish my parents would have did that to me and known like, I'm 42. I still don't know what I'm allergic to, but it'd be good to know like, oh, don't have carpet in his room because that dust going to fuck him up and we got to make sure we get all that dust. Anyway, the wellness check in the book, it, it like how many steps? You can like jot it down. How much caffeine? Oof, that's me right there. Yeah. Uh, nutrition, meditation. Oh, meditation. See, that's good. I really like my vision board as a system because mm-hmm. I'm about three guns shy from my vision board. Oh, three because on the shy. on the vision board it has like a little picture right there. Where it's like a gang of guns. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, that's the joke. Like, you know, I'm a blue belt away. Or whatever, but like it's got some jujitsu shit on there. I'm three stripes away from a blue belt and guns. Mm hmm. Uh, they gave a cat a blue belt this last class. Oh, nice. So they did a little pause, and uh, you know, teacher said, uh, coach said some nice things about him, and then he said some nice things, and it it was really a heartfelt moment. And I was like, I can't wait till I get a little stripe or something. I, I had never seen that done. Oh, they, really? I had never seen that done in person. Where they're like, Hey, man, stop the class real quick, and um. You got your blue belt. And what Coach Messina was saying, he's like, here, revolution. He's like, we don't just hand out belts. No, he doesn't. He's like, this cat been here forever, and he's cold with it. Like, he's been in the white belt, Pumates, and, like, won won some stuff. And the dude looked like he was ready for the ring, bro. Like, that dude was shredded. That motherfucker was shredded. He had eight-pack like a motherfucker. You ever seen a... six-pack plus the two-pack. You ever seen uh, And we'll get back to... That journal, which, by the way, uh, the title of that is, uh, I believe, it's a three-minute positivity journal. Excellent. Um, so get, you know, get something like that. Any kind of journal, man. Writing in the morning is, is a really good exercise for the mind and just to kind of get all your thoughts out and kind of set up your day, along with a regular, like, scheduled journal, kind of a scheduled planner, rather. Yep. I think it sets you up for, for success and that way. Yeah. I've learned throughout the years that, like, anytime I don't have my book bag with my planner in it, I done fell off. I ain't shit. And I'm going to get on my soul's nerves because I'm going to be like, hey, what was the next obligation after this? And she'd be like, I told you, you never listened to me. Are you high? <laughs> um, so, yeah, absolutely. This right here, brother, thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, this is going to stay in my bag. And this is going to be one of my main systems because it's all laid out for you. Uh, I can't wait to... You, so you got to start it from the beginning to understand how to use it and everything? Yeah, yeah. It, it helps. It's nice. And then uh, what's they have a Winston Churchill quote in there at the beginning. Okay. Probably, let's see if you can find it. It's probably like... So it's almost like a book with a bonus journal in the back. Like a small book with a bonus yeah, journal. Yeah, it's tiny. Like if you could... See if you can find it at the beginning, Chingo. It's like the second or third page maybe. It's like a Winston, Winston Churchill, Churchill quote. Churchill. It's, uh, it's got a dark background. Okay, yeah. The positive thinker sees the invisible, feels the intangible... And achieves the impossible. Winston Churchill. Uh, I believe that I'm super optimistic. Even though I might sound like a negative Nancy. I have the bad habit in meetings to like be devil's advocate. Like, well, what about this? Yeah. But um, I definitely, like since I was kind of young-ish, like I think um, definitely when I was DJing in college, like my DJ name was uh, DJ B-I-Z, the visionary. <laughs> DJ Biz, the visionary. Was it really? Yeah. Like the visionary part, it was like, cheesy as fuck but even then i understood like bro if you don't see it ain't nobody else gonna see it basically because the first time i got on the mic it was like daytime public radio like you you that was a classical song by blah 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 next blah. and you're shy oh actually I, when i when we dj parties i had to really get out of my show when we dj parties i'd have to be like hey, uh, i think i should tell them to make some noise or like uh, no, no, you talk. No, you, no, no, no. You no, know what's kind of weird it. about you it, dude? It. You do it. You there, do. You do. You do it. It's not like Weston. You do it. Um, there's a, a there's one highlight on the what did he said page. Uh, it's like it says Chingo chats. 
uh-huh. then it says highlight. And if you click on it, it's from the very first Shingo chat. If you go back to it, you sound exactly the way you just sounded in college. The very first Shingo yeah, chat? Yeah, go to the What Did He Said page. Go to the What Did He Said page real quick. And then I'll play this video oh, of... Uh, this motherfucker, boy. <laughs> Trying to expose me, dog. This motherfucker analyzing my... <laughs> My progression, instead of instead of appreciating the blow up, it is. I appreciate the blow up. Appreciate the blow. Up. All right, Chingo Chats. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to do comedy. I was a little kid. And I saw Mr. Eddie Murphy. That one doing yeah. Delirious. Huh? So, eighties Eddie Murphy was a big. Look at Rob. Looks so bored. <laughs> oh yeah, like like it was yesterday. That it was so classic. I was a little kid. And I'm just seeing this dude. I think maybe I was high, dude. You might have been high. I might have been high. <laughs> just busting your balls, man. And and that's the thing, man. That's the thing with weed is you got to decide. All right, man. Is this some shit you're only going to do at night? All right. No, no. Sometimes it's, it helps the podcast for sure. So look at this. Clip. All right. Check this out. This is from uh, January 20, or June 26, 2012, 9.30, 6 p.m. at the Burbank uh, 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. It's kind of long, so I'm just going to skip around. Because Eddie's uh, filming without... All right. Turn up, bro. Yeah, it's real bad audio. Ooh. Joe Rogan! That's how I'm gonna be when I get my first strike. Jiu-Jitsu, and Eddie and I talk about this shit all the time, 
people who are in jiu-jitsu and train on a regular basis, they're healthier people. Their egos are healthier, especially men. They're easier to talk to. They're easier to hang out with because they're facing reality on a regular basis. Something my Taekwondo teacher told me when I was a little that I never forgot was that martial arts are a vehicle for developing your And nothing in my life has ever put me in face with reality better than jujitsu. I think, you know, in life we can all distort our perception of things in order to make ourselves more comfortable, in order to make ourselves accept where we are. And there's a lot of people out there that are running around in life full of shit. You can't be full of shit when you do you do jujitsu, it's impossible to be full of shit. Because reality comes at you in the purest form possible. Life or death struggle using your determination, your focus, your techniques, your mind, and your training, and over and over and over again. It's reality. And if you fuck up and you get caught in a triangle, you've got to tap. And that is the end of the story. It's, it's, it's real as can get. And that made me a better person. It has uh, made me a better man. It's made me understand myself, my weaknesses, my strengths, the shit I need to work Jiu-Jitsu has been one of the most valuable tools. It's a great system. Great yeah. video, man. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty great cool. Video. Normally, I don't like to have y'all get an ear beaten and sit through some uh, a motherfucker filming right up under the AC and shit. <laughs> I think that's Joe Rogan talking in the background. Um, yeah, man. Jiu-Jitsu is a great system for a lot of a lot of reasons. You know, mainly what he said. Like, dude, I actually picked up the guitar last night and I was trying to play Jingle Bells and shit like that, and I completely fell off with the guitar like made a little bit of progress and then completely fell off because it's like it's almost birth time so that was a few months ago and it's almost like jujitsu can something like jujitsu it doesn't have to be jujitsu it could be weightlifting it could be crossfit it could be whatever whatever you're into um it could be the rosetta stone that can unlock other shit so if if you are humbled and you're secure and more confident just from knowing that you know a thing or two or knowing that you know what it feels like to get elbowed by mistake in the nose and I ain't cry or nothing. <laughs> I text my wife, y no lloré. Como dice Vale. Me caí, papi. Y no, y no lloré. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it could make you a better husband. It could make you a better father. It could make you a better son. It could make you a better... It might make... It, it, it might open up the Rosetta Stone to where like now your relationship with food has changed. Or now you hold yourself accountable. Now other habits. Now you, you tightened up all your systems. Now you're just more confident and self-aware. But it might, it might open up other things like picking up the guitar again. Yeah. Because you just start to understand like, hey man, you might be running away from the guitar. You're running away from the pain that you're going to suck in the beginning. You're running away from, you're just making excuses. You're being weak and you're just having excuses. Knowing that the higher self of you it's almost like the little angel on your shoulder is telling you, bro, think about how happy you will be a year from now when you consistently pick up the guitar, follow through on something you said you wanted to try and actually be able to play along with a couple things or learn a couple chords, um, which I'm, I always have to keep starting from scratch because every time I pick it back up, it's like, all right, E minor. Bring. <laughs> it's like, first, let's tune it. <laughs> First of all, who untuned my shit? Why well, has it been sitting so long that it's out of tune, first of all? Exactly, brother. No, I've, I've had to do the same thing with the guitar for years. Um, yeah, it's tough because that also is one of the, like, it's, it's a fun thing to want to learn, and then you get the guitar, and then you start learning it, and it is so difficult if you have never played guitar at all or any kind of string instrument or any, any, any instrument, honestly. Like, especially to, guitar, bro, especially guitar. In some ways, it's not it, that it hurts. It does hurt uh -huh. until you, because you, you're going to develop those calluses on your fingers, and until then, I started getting them, and then I fell off. That's even worse when you start getting them, and you're like, "Cool," and it becomes easier to slide, and then you stop doing it, and you have to recalibrate. I ain't never, them. I ain't never slid. No, uh, uh, I'm over here tabs. Yeah, I'm over here like chords. bling, bling, and chords. Yeah, like bling, bling, bling. I'm talking about YouTube tabs. Yeah, bling, 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 and then you're like playing it in slow mo on YouTube because it's like, hold on, bling. Bling, bling, <laughs> bling, bling, bling. That's all you have to do it though. And then you you accidentally touch the other string and it sounds all pendejo. Sounds like shit. Yeah. But but here's the thing. Just like jujitsu, when you decide to pick up a hobby, 
don't do it because you think you're going to join an actual band one day. You think you're actually going to put out an album. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I, I haven't, I didn't start fucking with jujitsu just because, oh, I'm actually going to get into a fight or some shit, or you're yeah. actually going to do anything with it in terms of like, oh, Chingo, you're going to compete. Like, hold on, man. I'm 42. You know what I'm saying? You know, I want to know some shit. I want to be a badass like Joe Rogan, be a black belt. You know what I'm saying I want to be a badass like Eddie Bravo, my Eddie Bravo, but um, but I'm not doing it because it's like I need to hurry up and get my black belt. It's like no, 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 wrong attitude. Right. And there were um, there were two cats that went to visit. Like it was their first day, and I was trying to feel them out. Like, are y'all gonna sign up? You know what I'm saying? Because they just kind of like there and just kind of like yeah, 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 no, 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 yeah, yeah. Like just like yeah, yeah, I used to do judo. Da, da. Or whatever, like, okay, why you didn't bring your gi? Mm. Oh, they were just spectating? They weren't? I think they participated a little bit. But um, but anyway, not, not, not to pick on them, but it's kind of like, okay, is this one of those times where you, like, pussyfooting with the situation? You know it's a saying? super intimidating uh, It's oh, a super yeah. intimidating thing to and sign that's, up. That's why it humbles you, yeah. It's, especially when it's like, to this day when I roll with these people, I mean, I've only gone four times. Yeah. To this day, it's like, you're about to roll and shit, and it's like, all right, hey, man. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. It's like, all right, dude, uh, first of all, take your wedding ring off. You know what I'm saying? Uh, get a mouth like, guard. Yeah. Maybe I gotta, a cup. I got to get a mouth guard. Yeah. Maybe a cup. And um, anyway. And then, you know, uh, so he, the homeboy is like, basically, you trying to like, you know, get on top of me. I'm not going to let you. And vice versa. And in the process, you might catch an arm or a neck <laughs> or you might get flipped or something. It's fun, man. But uh, it, it's addicting. It is addicting. And I remember when I first started, it was addicting. And at the time, too, uh, with us doing the jiu-jitsu podcast and we had hosted like a jiu-jitsu outdoor experience, some people in the community had known who myself and my other friends were. And t- two of them, they were already at the time, I think they were purple belts or brown belts. So they had been training for a long wow. time. And uh, it's not that I would get favorable treatment, but it was kind of weird when, you know, you go to a school who maybe you don't know anybody. And then it's kind of like you basically most places around here or other places you travel to. And like, hey, Chingo, right? I think ah, that's cool. But they know who you are. So it'd be kind of weird because you might get some favoritism or some people might want to take it easy on you kind of I thing. I ain't got no favoritism. I don't believe it. People have definitely given favoritism. Not, not um, I don't think, uh, first of all, bro, most of the students have no idea who most of them. Yeah. Uh, I know which ones know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and even then, like, you're drilling mo- half the, most of the time. You're learning a move. So yeah. it's very like, all right, and then I put my foot here, and then I put your arm here, and then I'm going to hip this way, and now I flipped you or whatever. Um, trust me. These motherfuckers be, like, pinning me, and, like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, burning 10,000 calories trying to fucking, yeah, like, motherfucker, get me some space. Like, big people that weigh twice, twice what you weigh. Yeah putting all they weight or they, once they get the knee on belly yep now when i watch now when i watch ufc i'm like up oh, knee on belly ain't shit you could do i mean <laughs> bro and that's why that's why cops if you're a police officer you should definitely try to make time try to make time because um sometimes you could tell some of the people in the class that are cops or or have some type of experience or whatever but it's like you want to kind of know how to apprehend and not always jump straight to the pistol or mm-hmm. or or like know a thing or two to where because man you ever see did you see the footage i think it was a fight in the miami airport I and did like the cop ended up was bro there. that cop looks so out of shape bro. yeah this motherfucker like paul blart <laughs> for those of you guys that aren't enthusiasts of martial arts or anything uh we hope not to bore you too much but let's get back to the original goal or the original uh, challenge for correct. 2022 correct how do you see it going down we'll try to implement this next week so we're gonna we're gonna do uh two more shows a free chingo chat and uh actually we'll probably end up doing all of them obviously two free and two public ones so we'll try to in the next four episodes put this idea together what do you want to do uh, I'm down to do your percentage thing. Okay. And, um, and then just as a convo, it doesn't have to be an official category or, or bonus or anything, but like the, the thing about trying to do at least three little workouts that can even just be, that might just be a system, which is like, well, how'd you do it? You know, it's like, well, I made sure to, I made sure to Monday, Wednesday, Friday type of thing. I made sure to either, um, you know, do something, go to the gym or, or something. How many sessions a week do you usually get with Sean? I think uh, in a perfect world, three. 
three and then one jujitsu. Yeah. So four, four pretty intense workout sessions because those three obviously are intense and then rolling is super intense. Yeah. And I don't, I don't roll for no whole hour or nothing like that. I, I just get in with a couple people and, and just make sure, because a lot of times like, oh, nutcracker, I got to go watch the little one. So it's like, I'm a row a little bit, but technically I'm, I need to go switch roles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so that's rare. So yeah, that is, that is a lot of working out. And that's why I know that I have to make sure that my nutrition is right. Cause like where the results at, bro. Yeah. You got a whole trainer and you wasting all this time. And it's like, you still get winded flipping this tire and sprinting down this thing. And, and then you got to do a, two burpees and you already, <gasps> you know what I'm saying? So self. No, no, no. I, I mean, I give myself props. Cause it's like, okay, well compared to how you were before, you know, or like you are 42, but my point is this, what I'm trying to say is this, is that if you're spending time and energy or maybe even money going and working out a lot, Make sure you're not fucking off that money because it's like, yeah, but you eat like shit. Yeah. Yeah. You over here eating all the kids' candies. You, you ate all the Halloween candy. You over here, oh, York peppermint patties. Don't mind if I do. Ooh, I, and such a just wonderful time of the year. And you done ate all the Hershey's kisses and, you know, oh, peppermint. Oh, Starbucks. Go, go get into Starbucks. You ain't getting no diet sugar. It's you true. Regular sugar. You can't outrun a bad diet. We we all understand that, but it's yet so hard to do, which is why something like this might be really good for people to stay accountable and achieve those goals. Because maybe you're going into 2022 and it's like, man, I've been saying I'm going to do this for five years. I've been saying I'm going to do this for the last decade. And maybe it's RPT and Chingo Chats that actually pushes you over the yeah, edge to stay accountable. Yes. It's it's time to show and prove. Yeah. It's time to show and prove. Like, no more talk. Figure out what your systems are going to be, whether it's like, OK, I got the vision board. I got the journal. I jot down what I eat. Uh, pick a diet, any diet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, like me, for example, the way I'm going to try to hold myself accountable is like crank up the heat, like crank up the heat. Like if Sean has you doing something, take shorter breaks, like push through, try to do more weight. Because sometimes he has us doing this fucking jerk clean front squat shit. And it's like, uh, this feels weird. This feels fucking weird. Or once you start putting too much weight on that bar and you're trying to, oh, what's that, clean and jerk mm -hmm. this shit? It's like, uh, yeah, that's, I'm ganking it. And, you you know, you're doing a whole bunch of stuff with some fucking weight. Um, and you'll, if, you, if you're a little bit more experienced or you've been through this road before and you know what you're doing, you'll be able to help the other patrons that might not. You know, there's going to be a varying degree of people that are complete newbies that are white belts that are just exercising or going to the gym. Maybe they've never been into a LA fitness or 24 hour fitness or anytime fitness to sign up for a membership. And this is the first time they're actually going to dedicate some time to do it. Y'all will be able to help them as well with your, uh, dietary suggestions or your or meal plans. Like I have programming from, uh, some big podcasters that I interviewed years ago and they gave me a bunch of their programs, um, that I've used over the years. Workout programs. Yeah. Like a legit programming for like powerlifting or a legit workout, like a programming for, um, uh, functional movements and they, they have different ones. So I'm willing to share that with people that are interested in different ones. I even have like a whole kettlebell one, which I mentioned to you a long ass time ago. You sent it to me. Yeah. You sent it to me. Um, that way we can just fucking reach these goals. Like the better we feel, the better we look, the more confident you are, the better your entire life is going to be. Yeah. Your energy levels, your health, uh, immune system. Cause you know, like me and Marty, so we're talking about this, we're walking, mm -hmm. you know, we're just talking about cranking up the heat, you know what I'm saying? Um, really, really holding ourselves accountable and like, what is it? Like doing all the things like, well, okay, you got the trainer and this motherfucker knows what he's doing. Right. You know, you got the, the nutrition part. They know what they're doing. It's delicious. Um, but the trainer, like the shit he had us do yesterday, it looked easy because it's like, oh, those are little bitty dumbbells. It's like, yeah, dude, but my fucking hamstrings right now because you're doing the heel slide, like the whatever you call oh, it. Oh, you're in a where, bridge? Where you bring in your face up and you're bringing your heels towards to your, your butt. butt. Yeah, yeah. Super hard, man. Yes. You, Cause <laughs> he uses these sliders that you put your feet on. Yeah. But anyway, um, this is what we were saying. We were saying like, you know how some people just like really let themselves go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, Hey, figure that out in terms of like what a, what a, what a professional, like a doctor, depending on, how like hey maybe something's off right hormonally um testosterone levels might be low like there's 
maybe something going on, inflammation. You just got to kind of, you need some guidance or whatever, right? So what the fucked up thing is, by the time you start to let it get to that point, now your immune system probably ain't working as good. The way your body processes blood sugar, you know, the way your the insulin, are you insulin resistant? Your pancreas is overworking, um, uh, inflammation. Now your energy levels, now you're lethargic. Now you're just tired. You can't move around. You're getting in your own way if you like get out of bed and stuff. And it's like, ooh, quality of life starts to go down. Now maybe you're insecure. That further throws off your hormones. Now you're depressed. You know what I mean? It's like, ooh, man. I was trying to find this uh, post somebody sent me where it was like, it's, you know, two years into the pandemic or into whatever the fuck this is. And there's not a word on TV about sleep, getting your vitamin D, sun, you know, there's this whole list of things. And it's true. You don't hear about any of that on TV. You don't hear about any alternative ways to improve your health so that you can fight the potential, you know, diseases out there. But instead, McDonald's promoting the jab. Yeah, and we've seen all these stupid uh, governors and even mayors that are like, oh, you got a burger. French fries. Exactly. Or donuts <laughs> or whatever it is. Man, and what are we, bro? Cattle? What the fuck? They want you to be dumb. They want you to be uh, sick. sluggish, sick, and uh, also not question them while you're at it. So, and, and guess what? If some shit pop off, who's going to be ready for war? <sighs> you know what I'm saying? The one that's in the little at the HEB with the cart, the electric thing. How you gonna go to war like that, bro? What's the quote? It's better to be uh, a soldier in a garden than a gardener in a war or something like that. Yes. It's very true. Yes. Not to say we're all gonna be fucking Rambos, but, but at least we could yeah. do is try. America has gotten, we've gotten real, real spoiled and soft with all this freedom and, you know, good military defense and just good economy. You had all these options of entertainment. And I, I will firsthand admit, like, yeah, bro, um, you're on it now, yeah. but it took your, you know, it took your attitude and the filters you view the world. Like you was a little bit too comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you always knew there was like crazy people out there, criminals, whatever. But, but when you start to think like, and some people that you think are for you, you know, that like, you know, you can't trust yeah, I think it, you, you know, can't be dependent for me. It always reverts back to appreciation, you know, like, yeah, we throw the word freedom around or we throw around like liberty and all this stuff that the United States gives you. And it's it's weird that it does always come back to that. But if you think about it, not everybody has the same liberty or freedom that we do here. And I always have an appreciation for it. So I'm like, OK, if people did all these crazy, uh, you know, they, they achieved these crazy feats of success through war and, you know, terror and all these things, horrific actions, acts of violence. For us to be this free, the least I could do is try to be the best, healthiest version of myself to keep this fucking wheel going. And protect your family. Like, of course. Like, regardless, you know, if it's like, well, is Texas going to secede or what, what's going on in this world? How, how bad are they going to divide us? And how much more tyranny can people take? And But uh, how bad is crime going to get? Like, at those moments, it's like, okay, so shit hit the fan. Like, I'm literally the man of the house. <laughs> I'm the first I'm the first and last line of defense. So you better take your ass to jujitsu. You better have you some ammo. You better know how to work that that gun. Um the that that booklet right there. What part what aspect of that do you think is gonna help you the most as far as like your systems and your goals? Is it tracking, you know, like water intake or is it the positive uh journal journaling or the meditation or what do you think you wanna really hone in on? Honestly, I think um I think everything that they have on this page in terms of like gratitude check it it forces you to think of three things you're grateful for mm -hmm. Th this book is a great system because otherwise you have to tell yourself like oh it's time for my gratitude journal you know what i'm saying or like oh i should probably keep track of my nutrition and steps today and did i get nature it's like that's a lot to keep track of yeah for you to prompt yourself versus the book will will for um force you to assess like what you're feeling that's that's important like i know sometimes like uh the word feeling what you're feeling it it seems like that ain't gangster that's not manly or whatever but the reality of it is even on the battlefield like just from a uh, um a go-getter somebody that's trying to optimize like this is your software like all your trauma or your how you view the world, uh, your nature versus nurture, whatever. Like this is your operating system. 
right? And and if people want to do a deep dive on that, just get on YouTube and you can probably look up like Scott Adams operating system. And I think some other people have used that lingo to kind of um kind of talk about how they think people's reality is shaped. So in other words, in other words, a mental health check, it might sound like, oh man, that's weak, dog. You ain't supposed to, you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to be strong minded, homie. You know, we don't we ain't bitches. And it's like, yeah, but even on the battlefield, when you're when you're just a man living this human experience on this earth, and for you to operate better it's good to kind of know like you know what I'm, I'm feeling a little scared about this big move coming up i'm uneasy about it i need to remember that it's faith over fear or it's good to do an assessment of your fear levels like what things are you anxious about so you could do one of the things tim ferris does um fear setting have you heard that Mm-mm. well that boy tim ferris man that's a that's a powerful nerd right there i know i used to listen to his podcast religiously man potocito bro i I fell off on his um podcast when did you fall when it's been a minute i fell off when he was gonna tell the story of how he was like molested very bad from age four to like i forget what oh jesus yeah like he he basically was like and this may explain a lot of things because he was like suicidal in college he almost offed himself and um, like by chance, his parents got an alert from the library about a book he had checked out and something they saved. He talked him out of some shit. But anyway, that's when I fell off on Tim Ferriss. Anyway, uh, me dio cosita, we, me dio cosita, pobrecito. Uh, fear setting. He has a he has a thing called fear setting. For example, it's very powerful. I don't do it often enough. Let's say the um the example he gives, which I think is a good one, is okay. I'm gonna fear set. All right. I'm afraid of working off my laptop um, in, in uh, Europe for three months. I don't know if I could do it. I'm a little scared because some, the tax paper is going to come to the P.O. box. Nobody's going to be there to check it. I'm a, I'm a get, worst case scenario. Um, I think he was saying if I'm in London too long, it, it's really dark and gloomy. And he's, his family comes from like man of depressant. Like his mm. depression kicks in really bad. So he put all the fears. This might happen. This might happen. This might happen. This might happen. And I think at the time he had like a supplement company, like the Nootropic oh, yeah, brain yeah. Mm-hmm. stuff, which I'm taking some. Um, tell you about they're off the chain. Part of my systems. Ooh. So the fear setting on the other column, you would put, okay, if it does get too gloomy and now I'm depressed as fuck in the UK because it's like re- raining all the time. He's like, I'll just catch a quick flight to Spain. Or some shit. And I'll be at the beach and I can just live there for a month. Like problem fucking solved. Like you shouldn't let fear keep you from make, taking this trip. And then he just went all down the line. Like, okay, what if some important papers came to the PO box? He's like, I'm gonna have shit rerouted with the post office, and my virtual assistant will handle X Y Z. And basically, he's like, oh, I was tripping. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. I didn't know any of that. Fear setting, yeah, look into it. You know, that kind of, uh, that sparked uh, a phrase that I heard recently, not for the first time, but I think I hadn't heard it in a long time. <clears throat> and then suddenly I heard more people use it, maybe not them not knowing what it was, but like seasonal depression. Are you familiar with seasonal depression? Is it like when it's wintertime? Yeah, I don't know if it's just wintertime, but usually around like the holidays, around when it starts getting fall, winter, huh. people inexplicably get mm. depressed. Mm. So some of these people are, were more on the traditional Mexican side, didn't, you know, not really with it when it comes to like talking about therapy or possibly needing a, a, some, some counseling or anything like that. And uh, so I looked it up and I'll probably look it up here again in a second, but it's, it's a real thing. It's a phenomenon. And it happens in places like, uh, where's it really? Uh, Boston. Boston or uh, Washington where it's like cloudy oh, yeah. and gloomy and stuff. Uh-huh. So for them, it happens more often, you know, periodically throughout well, the year. Well, they say Seattle, like, Seattle, be, having a lo- be having a lot of uh, suicides and shit. Yeah. So many non-sunny days. So then along with that seasonal depression, it's also a combination of the cold and the gloominess and then the holidays. For some people, the holiday setting elicits some sort of seasonal depression as well. I wonder if those people are, um, like, religious or what their faith is like. Probably that would make sense. I wonder. On, yeah, I'm sure it varies. 
So if you know somebody that kind of gets you're noticing they're they're kind of in the in the dumpsters for whatever reason, like keep that in mind maybe. And I don't know if you can necessarily help them out of it or through it, but just bear in mind, like some people might be harder to deal with during the holidays. And you're like, why? It's supposed to be such a happy time. Some people just ain't about it. Yeah. But you know what helps? Having systems and working towards some positive shit. Yeah. And yeah. Mm hmm. I think um, there's a lot of good systems. And then I was saying about the supplements. I got it at Nutrition Depot. It has some like uh, ashwagandha, a lion's mane, okay, the, mushroom, mushroom type yeah. stuff, nootropics, you know, for like focus. And Do you know which one it is? Do you want to shout I it out? I think it's called Vividium. Okay. I think that might be the name of the company or the product. Vividium, huh? Uh-huh. Hmm, sounds, sounds like a subsidiary of Viagra. Or like the video games. Not where I was going with it at all. <laughs> uh, was it Nutrition Depot or Total Nutrition? My bad. I think it's Total Nutrition. Yeah, you always get... Who, who's Nutrition Depot? I don't know. It's I, another I, store. There's, yeah, I don't even think I've been to one of them. Yeah, there's one in Sugarland. There's oh, a few okay. of them left around here. Mm. Uh, all right, so if you had to put a, a number on it, though, we're sticking with 10 pounds. Like, If you were to say like your fight weight is your tour weight, like when you get ready to ramp up the tour, is that your fighting weight for the tour? And t- like lose about 10 ish pounds. Uh, let's try it. Okay. I think, yeah. Cause, uh, yeah, like I said, man, I don't want to get too tiny and that's hard to maintain and all. But I definitely just want to start cranking up the heat. Like, okay, you're going to start getting in the groove of everything. And, um, and there's been times, um, I can't remember like around when, where I'll look at old footage of us in the gym <laughs> with the trainer mm-hmm. and it's like, oh shit, man, what diet were we on then? Or how, long have we been working out how often to where you see the difference it's like okay and that's when the baby was about to be born uh, and that's right after the baby you know and now you're like thinking like oh yeah okay we went we dropped down to two a week or so on let's uh shift over we had a couple questions that we didn't get to on rpt but let's see if any of them are uh jingo chat friendly and even if they're not this is we're already on patreon anyway so they're everyone's a part of the tia here oh. uh psh, psh, psh. Matthew Carter says, what are Chingo's thoughts on possible war with China and Russia? Oh, man, I have not been keeping up that much with that particular subject besides. um, Can't say I have either. I mean, besides that, like, obviously, shit's been brewing in the South China Sea over Taiwan. And now you got Biden over here trying to basically buck up to Russia and be like, hey, man, leave Ukraine alone. You know what I'm saying? And saying he's going to threaten him with sanctions. Yeah, we're going to have to brush up on our kind of Russia. World, world, uh, world, uh, what do you call it? Uh, geopolitics. Foreign, our foreign policy. Foreign policy. There you go. Uh, Laura Dorado, she had sent me a message yesterday about the Matrix, and we got one here also on Patreon about how, uh, let me see, thoughts on the new Matrix trying to take back the phrase red pill. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did, did you hear that? I heard a couple of people tell me that too, so I, I gotta watch it. I don't know exactly uh, what happens, but so how you how do you watch it? Where is it? It's on HBO Max. So if I'm subscribed to HBO Max, I can watch. Yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah you yeah. don't gotta pay an extra fee, you know shit. I don't think so. That's not like that's some Disney shit where they make okay. you pay forty more dollars. Because isn't it like in theaters too? It is. Yeah, yeah. How did that deal work? I don't know. Who paid who? Like HBO said, hey man, we want to like pay the studio and say we also want to uh, drop it on the same day. Yeah, let me see. I'm gonna click the article real quick. It says it's like you're buying a movie wholesale. Uh, <laughs> Matrix Resurrections writer says movie will reclaim red pill from political right. How unfortunate. Well, I'm, cu- I'm curious. Like, okay, what do you mean? Like, what's in the movie? Uh, a screenwriter for the up... It says a screenwriter, right? So I wonder how much of a real role this person has in the movie. A screenwriter from the upcoming Matrix Resurrections said the meta movie sequel will reclaim the term red pill, saying the phrase was kidnapped by the political right. In an interview with The Onions, The AV Club, the co... Well, the Onion? Yeah, right. The Onions, The AV Club, the co, co-screenwriters, co uh, some long name I can't pronounce, explained how the new movie is attuned to the current political and cultural and political climate. We got to watch this. Yeah. Because I was looking forward to it, man. I'm, I'm AKA, sure it was going to be enjoyable. AKA China don't like some of the shit. Y'all be saying over there. Right. <laughs> Speaking of, I saw a comment on YouTube where it was like, hey, uh, Chingo Wick, because I mentioned John Wick the other day. Please watch that movie sooner than later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, Logji says, did y'all watch The Matrix? And if so, 
What political clues did you notice besides the color of the pills? Is Hollywood still trying hard? Uh, or is this a breakthrough with the convincing? Mm, yeah, I got to watch it. We'll watch it. I have no idea. Uh, thoughts on Pfizer pill treatment. I just read that last night or I saw the headline, but I didn't dive deep into it. I don't know what kind of Pfizer oh, treatment. Yeah. Basically, it's a little blue pill. Um, that you don't, just blue. you don't want, yeah, right. Like the fucking, oh yeah, well we've got a blue pill, you <laughs> crazy Trump tards. Um, yeah, it's probably their version of ivermectin. Uh, basically, right. Just they like to change a change couple molecules, molecules and, yeah. and bam, copyright, uh, trademark. Uh, another one from Matthew Carter. Will you be going back on American Troll to discuss the events <laughs> and, uh, of your interview after 10 months? Yeah, man, Gil, Gil hit me up like, hey, man, you want to come back through? And I was like, well, let me let me pick a good time to where Biden really fucking up. I could be vindicated. Uh, pick any day of exactly. any month. Yeah, but some people don't be knowing and keeping up. Um, Someone in the Discord sent me an episode of with Gil, uh, American Cholo Podcast, and he sounded borderline MAGA just because the content was basically like, he played the pendeja of the week was this uh the teacher who was like um i took down the american flag <laughs> but you can salute that one mm. it's like the trans flag he was just like should we hate america he was taking callers okay and like most of the people are like man these fools are lames they don't be knowing they're like you know a lot of our families in the military or but we have to love our country you know what i mean like saying pretty patriotic stuff and uh you had like one or two like you know you guys are fucking sellouts like you know f this country uh speaking of of teachers was that a, that was a teacher right yeah didn't play this one last episode but i figure what the hell little holiday session for you guys everyone in leander liked reading a lot but some evangelicals in leander did not these kooks hated re reading the whole reading season please don't ask why no one quite knows the reason it could be perhaps critical thinking causes fright. It could be their heads aren't screwed on just right. But whatever the reason, their brains or their fright, they can't follow policy in plain black and white. You wrote EF Local so that our children could learn. Please follow policy if there's cause for concern. These bigots don't get to choose for us, that's clear. Then how, I am wondering, did we even get here? They growl at our meetings, all hawing and humming. We must stop this indoctrination from coming. They've come for the books and the bonds, and what for? Their kids don't even attend Leander's schools anymore. Bring back our books, maintain decorum, good grief. Wouldn't it be nice to have a meeting in peace? So that was a, a teacher when, uh, so after parents spoke out against CRT and books containing pornographic content, this teacher uh, demeaned them with a Dr. Seuss parody. Unhinged. Um, are there any parents that are f like mad in favor of CRT? Like, hey, you got to let them, you know, this is just, this is merely nothing more than learning about slavery. I mean, if so, they haven't, I haven't seen any clips. Like, they're not going to these school board meetings talking about how, yeah, let's teach all of our kids about this. Man, she's very, wow, she sounded extremely far, extreme left. Unhinged. And she's the show as a teacher? Yeah. Hmm. I guess from their perspective, they see it as like, hey, mind y'all's business. Let us do the teaching. Stop trying to come over here and tell us not to teach about this pornographic book stuff. Like, how could any parent be okay with that part? Yeah, that's weird. Like, even if you're a little fuzzy on, on what CRT is, somebody assigned you an opinion on it versus, okay, well, porn, this pornographic stuff in these books is like crazy shit for these little kids. How y'all feel about that? Um, total complete non sequitur segue here. Louis CK's back. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I kind of want to see that. Yeah, I want to see what's up. Um, people are obviously outraged because five years of being canceled isn't enough. And I um, just wanted to get your thoughts on it. I think he's going to um, change the game once again because he sounded off his website, right? He was the first to do it. So I think that um, there may... I hope that the public gets primed by this 
and they can know that that's an option. So if you, whether you like Carlos Miller or Andrew Schultz or me or anybody else, you should know that that's an option for like, oh, I heard Chingo's dropping a, a special or a 30 minute and you just pay $5 or some shit and you click the thing and it goes to your computer and now you own the file or however, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it'd be good if the, if the public started knowing like, oh, that, that's an option. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like clever. Whoever you like, they don't necessarily have to go take whatever Netflix or whoever, you know, if they got room for them or not. Yeah, um, I know. Last time you talked about doing a thirty. Would you do a thirty or a full hour if you recorded your next? Well, piece? I think I think people's. Um, I'm leaning. Spans? I'm leaning towards thirty because number one, attention spans, big time. You're up against a lot. Uh, like for example. Me and Joseph were talking about this the other day. We were talking about albums and movies and things like that. And I told him, because he, he surprisingly like, yeah, I know about Wu-Tang and all this stuff. I was hearing him play some shit on his phone. And, um, and I, was like, I was like, bro, back then, you couldn't just upload an album. Like, Wu-Tang, Tonight at Midnight, and it's live. You can stream it now. It was like, we got to get a record deal. We got to save up for studio time. Like, um, it's got to, you know, it's got to get made. They got to distribute it. Now it has a release date. Now it's at a record store. Now we're hoping that kids will get in the car, go to a brick and mortar and buy the new copy of the Jay-Z or whoever it may be. Right. Um, or the cassette and shit like that. And I was like, now, the barrier of entry, I was like, now it's like your attention span is really being pulled because it's like, okay, and Jay-Z dropped an album. And then the next month, maybe someone else did. But like you had time to live with that album. You didn't memorize the skits. Like it wasn't like, did you hear such and such new album? Yeah, but three others dropped the same day. So I haven't had a chance. Do you think you'll do it on your website or how are you going to find, how, do you, how are you going to tackle distribution, do you think? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I think right now in a perfect world, it'd be more of like, um, you know, partner with one of these Netflixes of the world because everybody's on there. Yeah. Everybody's on. It's almost like saying, um, it's a bad example, but like very bad example. Like say you, a, a MMA fighter and it's like, <laughs> so do you want to do it on UFC or how? And it's like, um, you mean, do I want to be seen and in a venue and get paid? Hey, what's your fight? I'm gonna do that on my own. What's your fight name? What's your fight name? What What is your? uh, Oh yeah, we gotta think of that. We need everybody in the Discord right now. Tap in right now. Um. Oh, I had one the other day, and it was like it was something funny. Oh, El Chapulín. No, not Chapulín. Yeah, no, it wasn't El Chapulín. It was something. It was something like that. I'm gonna see if Mighty Soul remembers. Okay. Uh, just to go back real quick to put a pin in this uh, comedy thing. I remember Bert, just a Bert or Theo saying that they were putting their cl- damn near their closer and their hottest shit at the beginning of the special, just because they saw how the time waned off the after data. yeah after the half hour mark that they weren't even getting to their closers if they put it at the end. Mm-hmm. So something to keep in mind, I guess. Exactly. And um, I mean, even Rick Gutierrez suggested he's like, dude, just you could fuck around film two half hours. He's like license one. And then you got the other one in your back pocket. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Change clothes like a motherfucker. Change the set a little bit. I don't know. But uh, maybe I'll holler at like Adam Taylor. He's really good at uh, the guy that put together just a bit. He's, I think we talked about this on the yeah. last episode. Yeah. He's Was that good. the gentleman he's good. I met at uh, when you did the Whiskey Brothers yeah. uh, live podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's good at understanding like you know, the marketplace, what, what level of quality is necessary to turn in to these people and how to, how to take an idea and visually make it better. Yeah. Like we got to cut to this when you say that and you know, how to sprinkle in some shit. Cool. Yeah. Well, shit. I hope everybody had a great Christmas and, uh, we're looking forward to the last week of 2021 mm-hmm. and, uh, hope everybody goes to the patreon.com forward slash red built the miles to sign up so we can upgrade more gear. Yes. And join the newsletter. Yes, for sure. Especially now that we got this health and fitness challenge, man. Um, I fuck around bootleg this book and shit and scan this one page, <laughs> print it out at your house, do the mental health check, wellness check, your water, your caffeine, your steps, what your gratitude list. This is a really good one. Wins for the day. Today I accomplished blank. And then you put that 
because you know those days, man, where it's like some bullshit paperwork or you got to go fax some stuff and get on three phone calls and, and you've been avoiding it. And it's like the day that you actually cross that off your fucking to-do list. It's like, oh yeah, it's okay if I only did one thing today. It was a big thing. It's such a win. It's, it's always, you know, sometimes it's the smallest things that make a big impact. Mm-hmm. For sure. So uh, happy holidays, everybody. And we'll talk to you in the Discord, uh, patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. Join the newsletter and we can get this, these challenges crack a lack. And actually, I'm going to go weigh myself right now to give you accurate numbers. Perfect. Peace.